Welcome back to another episode of United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I am Robert from the U.S., just outside Nashville. And with us, we have our co-host, Lionel from Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> you're Toronto. Getting, you're, getting, you're getting better. I was just being uh, facetious. I just I, kidding, Don't mind Canada. me. If you see me leaning, it's because I got a slightly different light set up. And it, I kind of ran out of time in perfecting it, so... Uh, maybe I should have just moved my entire existence this way a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's Toronto, <laughs> not Toronto. Yeah, I, 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 I was just, yeah, I was just, just, you know, just poking smart-ass. fun, right? Yeah, right? it's yeah, like if I went to ass. if I went to uh, Louisville and I said, "Hey, are you guys from Louisville?" No, it's and Louisville. Probably, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I thought it was just your accent saying it, but I've since heard lots of people from Louisville calling it Louisville. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, that's not what we came to talk about today. It is not. It is not. I hope everybody's had a uh, good week so far. Um, some crazy stuff going on and some cool stuff going on and some more crazy stuff going on. So a few things to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but first, I want to mention, and I just I, I don't forget it every year, but sometimes it sneaks up on me. Okay. Today is 13 years of 9-11. I cannot believe it's been that long. I'm sorry. Did you say 13 years? 13 years, 2001. Oh, 13. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. 23 I, years. That's time to be laughing. <laughs> 23 years. I was about to say the same thing. We did, by the way, we did, we did not pre discuss this, but no. I was going to do exactly the same thing and mention that. And from, and, and you know what? A lot of people say, well, it was two different perspectives because this is what we do on our show, right? Uh, we talk about different, differences and similarities between the United States and Canada. And, and we got a, a whole bunch of subjects we haven't even touched yet that we're going to really have fun with uh, in the future. But the one thing about it is, just to be brief in that area, is that that affected Canada every bit as much as it affected the U.S. for all kinds of reasons. We know mm-hmm. a lot of the same people. We're married to people across the border. We have kids and family and children and parents and brothers and cousins across the border. We work across the border. Uh, and and so on and so on, and people who from s- several different countries perished unfortunately in that event. Yeah, and and also let's not forget when they closed the American airspace, uh, we have NORAD here, right? North, uh, what do you call it? Uh, North, uh, yeah, North American. I can't remember. I just... North American. <laughs> Brad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the bottom line is it's there to protect North America. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it and it is equally involved. Canada and the United States are, are, are together in protecting all of our coastal regions around the entire of North America. Um, so basically, the bottom line is when they close the entire U.S. airspace, 100 percent to everything but authorized military, <laughs> uh, yeah. that is within 30 seconds became an order in Canada as well. The exception was Canada allowed planes to fly in so that people would die midair <laughs> and had to land in Canadian space and demanded when they had some pilots saying, no, 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 we're going to New York. And they couldn't even get a hold of anybody in New York because they, they shut everything down. And yeah. they said, no, you cannot change your radio and you cannot change your course. If you do not land in Gander, you will be met. And they said this, I've actually heard radio. Uh, you will be met with military aircraft. You must land at Gander or whatever airport they were closest to. Yeah. So there were planes that were way past Gander. They had to land in Winnipeg. If they were too far, far past Winnipeg, they had to land in Calgary or Edmonton and so on. Well, it makes sense because, I mean, the whole attack was with airlines, yes. not not like military right. jets. So it could be any um, any passenger airline any, it could be any, a weapon any I mean, and it doesn't matter how small it is because they well they were yeah. only big jets so they should have allowed uh you know a couple of in what no i never heard anybody say that but I've, I've heard a couple of people recently who are too young to be be there to understand it and say well did they allow some no they didn't because you never know they it could be a ruse while they actually send a much bigger bomb inside a small plane you yeah. don't know right so they have right. to check everything out and it took them i can't remember i think it was like three days before they would allow passengers to go home again uh, I, don't recall, I don't recall. Yeah, remember. it's it was so it was so messed up. Yeah, and so it, if anybody if anybody's wondering just how serious it was uh, in regards to how much uh, Canada got involved in in basically keeping the air 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 safe for everybody, and I mean the people on the planes. Uh, just look up Gander, Newfoundland. Uh, uh, what is it called? Operation Yellow Ribbon, I believe. Google that and and see 
just how far even that one small town went and how many how many yeah. jumbo jets a tiny <laughs> little airport that was honestly once the largest airport in the world yeah mm. it was made as a military uh, airstrip like a hundred years ago or something like that uh for world war one or two or what it would blow before two but uh yeah. specifically to get it you know quick uh, take on you know the fastest way to get overseas into the into the theater yeah yeah uh of course it grew into a normal town and yeah well i never forget because my brother had just gotten out of the army and i remember him getting a message from command because you know when you get out of the military at least in the u.s i don't know how it is in canada but you have to be you automatically go into a reserve status so they can call you back oh, within okay. I don't know, like a, maybe a three or four year period of time, they can automatically call you back for, you know, if they need to. And oh, he got a I message from that. command that they might be recalling some people back into the service, but he didn't get called up. But he's, okay. he was like, he's like, hell yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> and, you know, it was a crazy time, crazy time. But anyways, 23 years, not 13 Math is hard for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's always a day to remember because I, I think everybody that was of any adult age at that time knows exactly where they were when that I happened. think anything over anything from like 11 <laughs> or 12 and up and you probably remember it. Probably. You know, maybe even younger I, for some people. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. But anyways, yeah. so that's just my, the first thing I wanted to make mention of. So, yeah. <laughs> excuse me sorry i'm having a little bit of a sinus issue just a weather change here it's kind of getting a little cool in the morning so uh, uh poor so. baby it's still it's sorry only about that it, i'm sure i'm sure it's only like 55 or 55 i mean 65 degrees in the morning and you're freezing to death 50 thank you 50 oh poor baby 50. I, wo I woke up the other morning and it would have been closer to about 43 so yeah, I'm not ready for uh, 43 roughly. yet. But when I get to Germany, <laughs> Germany temperatures right now are uh, mid high 60s during the day and 40s at night. Daytime temperatures, fantastic. I love it. Got to do a lot of walking around. So it's well, wait a minute. Hot, when you go, but, when are you going? Um, I leave next Friday. It'll be colder then. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. <laughs> no, according to the 10 day forecast, as of right now through the 25th, it's mid high 60s. Really? Oh, oh yeah. they're get okay. They're getting a little bit of a, a hang on to the decent weather there, then, which is nice. It's not hot, uh, but it's not cold. So, trust me, I've been paying uh, close attention because the only day that I really care anything about weather is on the twenty sixth, which is when we're supposed to drive Nurburgring. I don't want it to rain. I don't care what the temperature is. I just want zero rain. All the other days, I don't care. I would love to be there and I would love to drive the track in the driving rain if I had the proper wheels for it. I've done a racetrack uh, in, in, in the rain and watched everyone else either going really slow or skidding out. I was just zipping along past them, no problem. Because I had tires that were meant to drive in the rain. I understand, but the laws of physics. Mind you, not, not, you at, not at 200. Not, I didn't have tires that were meant to drive in the rain at 250 kilometers an hour, mind you, but. No, but you know, <laughs> laws of physics tell you a red road a, a red road does not have as much traction as a white road. road. <laughs> Apparently, I'm having a really hard time talking tonight. So That's sorry. good. Right? <laughs> and there's this Anyways, week's short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's on me this time. Wet roads and all. So, anyways, but all right, uh, all yeah, right Barbara so. Walters, what's what's next on the agenda or first on it, really? Because we haven't really gotten to number one yet. Yeah, well, no, uh, about... I guess I guess really the first thing I was <laughs> going to talk about was the um, the debate. We just had the Harris Trump oh, debate, uh, and it's all right. this was a really highly anticipated debate. Of course, you know, Kamala Harris has never had a debate like this, but she's been a successful prosecutor for many years. She's an attorney, so you know she's done a lot of debating in courtrooms for sure. Well, of course she and, has, but here's what I want to know, and I'm sure everyone watching wants to know is, did she do well? She did very well. Oh much God. better than expected. In the beginning, you could tell she was, her nerves, I guess, probably got the best of her. Um, you could tell she was a little, not 
skittish, but you can just tell people's voice, yeah. you know, get a little crackly or whatever. But then once she got through the first like five or 10 minutes and she started actually answering questions and getting into the thick of it, she took it away and she was, she was confident and very precise in most of her answers. Of course, both of them beat around the bush, you know, with half the answers, but, um, yeah. I, everyone believe everyone thinks that she actually um, controlled the the whole debate. I'll tell you this. Here's here's one thing that impressed me the most is that you know Trump can be very intimidating because yeah. he's he's an asshole and he that's how he kind of like rules by intimidation, right? Yeah. And never once did I see any type of intimidation from her. As a matter of fact. Most of the time when she was debuking him or rebuking him, is that right? Again, I'm not talking about. <laughs> Anyways, she would look, she would turn her head and she would look at him and she would just like burn holes through the side of his head and he refused to look at her. He would not look at her. But she would right. stare him down and just literally like rebuke everything he was saying to his face, but yet he would not turn and look at her. And I thought that was impressive he hardly even wouldn't even say her name he kept saying you know biden biden administration biden this and she finally said i am not biden i am kamala harris you know (laughs) so i am my own person you know uh but yeah i I thought it was a very interesting debate i am not i am not biden i am uh kamala khan Uh, i mean harris (laughs) those superpowers uh, I will say for those of you watching, um, I am not Democratic. I am Republican by nature. I am conservative. I don't like a lot of the Democratic policies and the way they do things. And uh, but I also don't like a uh, fascist, Marxist, Putin wannabe in the White House either. And that's what the other side is. <laughs> so again, Trump's got some good ideas and i i don't think a lot of his uh, policies as far as economics are necessarily bad but i just think the man has I, other intentions I, that I people don't to, get i have to dive in when you say yeah. that i sorry i have to dive in i don't <clears> think <throat> trump has any ideas whatsoever yet alone good ones anything that is involved in in any way shape or form anything that he talks about is somebody else came up with the idea every bad idea that he throws out is someone else telling him don't let him do that to you just tell him no and it's and it's spout off some of your bs i mean man doesn't do anything i mean uh, i could go on and on about the guy and then everyone's gonna get mad we're gonna end up watch well this will be the most viewed one because (laughs) trump lovers will come bashing (laughs) after me or something well Uh, you know he he (laughs) One of the things that a lot of the moderators and the, you know, the stuff I read after the fact said that Trump stayed pretty much on the defensive and he kept going back to the same old bullshit, you know, uh-huh. you know, basically um, ridiculing, criticizing, you know, the, the way he does. And everyone know said anything that, else. Everyone said that when he was asked specifically, like, what's your plan? Because he doesn't like Obamacare. He wants to get rid of Obamacare. But he didn't get rid of it when he had the chance, when he was in office, because he didn't have a plan to get rid of it. And he couldn't just, like, end it because you're going to kill insurance for millions of Americans, right? And so they asked him again, like, well, you want to get rid of Obamacare. What is your plan to get rid of Obamacare? And he's like, well, we're, we're, we have some things we're considering. And he doesn't have a plan. But on the flip side of that, um, Harris was very much like, yes, I have a plan. I have ideas and, and things I want to put in motion. you know." And he kept saying at the very end, it was really his most poignant um, rebuke to her was, why haven't you done it? You've had three and a half years in office as vice president. Why haven't you done it? And which is a good point. He should have brought that up like way earlier in the whole debate. But again, she's vice president. She's not the president. She still has to, you know, kind of rule under Biden's, you know, term of ideas and et cetera, et cetera. But 
I don't know. It's going to be very interesting how if votes are swayed after the debate. Of course, you're going to have the Trump loyalists. You're going to have Democratic loyalists, you know, and we'll just have to see how the whole coin falls. But I don't like either one of them regardless, but I thought she did a very good job in the debate. I just want to point yeah. that out. I don't, neither one of them are my candidate. If I could take the best of both of them and make one candidate, I'd vote for that person. But I don't. I can't do that. So, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying there. But she did very well. I was very impressed with her poise and her um, her demeanor and her not being intimidated. She, the fact that he, she just kept staring him down and he would not look at her, to me, spoke volumes. They didn't have to say anything. That spoke a lot to me. But right. yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a crazy one. I, I don't expect this whole election to go um smoothly at all because you know you're gonna have the whole you know if 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 the democrats win again it's gonna be stole again you know and it's just you know at any rate so that's all i want to say on that um topic that's well you know. It's gonna they be might a have scary another one time we'll as we get in there. there. A little bit, a little yeah. bit antsy. It's like watching. It's like watching your third favorite football team play <laughs> in the Super Bowl against your least favorite team, and you're not really sure why you're watching. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, we'll, we'll move on to the next topic, and we'll we'll save Ooh. that for the next debate or when we get closer. Because now I wonder what the next know. topic should be. Was there any news this week? <laughs> oh man, let's have a quick, a quick little discussion about. Uh, do you have you uh, got any news about what these things have going for them? Anything new about them? How much they've been updated? Any of that stuff? Or uh, should well, I? Well, I didn't have a chance. Well, no, I mean you, I, you probably know more than I do, only because I did not get a chance to even watch any of it. Um, I did read a few things. I know that um, it's not even being released with their Apple intelligence, but that is correct. I think they, I think they missed the boat in calling it IAI. I mean, I, I could be wrong there, but. Uh. <laughs> I never, you know what? I never even thought of that. That would have actually been kind of cool. IAI, IAI. I, <laughs> and it's not even like a tongue twister. You just I, 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 I. yeah, yeah. A strength, I just that was beauty, funny. titanium. Okay, that's nothing new. Uh, we we know about the titanium. I don't think uh, didn't we do this once before in a podcast where we rolled through uh, uh, features? Uh, not with the but, not with the iPhone stuff. No, no. Not but it was, there was something. I seem to remember doing this once before. I, I just don't. Yeah, remember. there was there was a product we looked at. I don't remember what it was. To be honest with you, I'm hey, maybe it wasn't important. <laughs> Maybe it was a flop. Did we predict that? Uh, okay. Thinnest borders are any Apple product. This, by the way, is a, is, is um, a misrepresentation on this picture. I, I can tell you that right now. The, the reason why I say that, the one on the right side, uh, is simply because I've actually seen a picture of it in a guy's hand. Oh, sorry, video. And it's it really does look a lot closer to what you would see on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Which is, it's not a lot of border, but they make it look like this is almost razor thin. And quite frankly, just to put this into perspective, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, and I, I'm guessing probably the S23, I'm not sure, are very thin. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, bezels. And I don't think these quite match up with that. I think they're going to be closer to what we see on the Pixel. So, yeah, that's, this looks the same. I don't. Yeah, I see. Well, if, for the most part, the phone's relatively the same. The, I, there is a the the, the, the the this. Sorry, no, I can't talk. It's contagious. The um, screen size has been grown, well grown. They've made it bigger on all of the devices. Certainly the pros, but I'm pretty sure they said all of them. So uh, the bottom one. Let's get to see. Oh shoot, that just changed quickly, didn't it? Uh, let's get past that and see if I can find the screen size information. Um, the bottom line is they're slightly bigger, but if you know anything about iPhone, they're always ever so slightly wider and this less small tall. pigeon. Yeah, they're they're not slightly wider and less tall than than your average Android phone, right? So we all have the that nine by sixteen uh, or nine by nine by twenty, sorry, uh, 
aspect ratio for our phones. Oh, not all, but most, right? Whereas iPhone has uh, gone with something like a, a not nine by six, nine by eighteen, or nine by seventeen, or something like that. Uh, I think what they're doing is they're just shaving slightly off, so they're making it the tiniest hair, like we're talking a millimeter taller, which gives them that extra point two or something like that for the screen size. So they're going to have a six uh, a six point nine inch screen on the uh, uh, what is it uh, sixteen Pro Max. Uh, whereas last year was, uh, I think they said, uh, 6.7. I think they said it was. Hmm. So Interesting. It, tiny little differences. And, but 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 guys who've actually had it in their hands said, you really can't tell the difference unless you actually slap them beside each other and just yeah. kind of stare at them. Why is my battery saver on? My computer's plugged in. I, I'm i starting to panic right about now. You know that, right? Um this yeah, it's uh, it, I, I don't um, yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. You know, I I didn't see anything that was groundbreaking. That uh, you know, as I was reading through some of the, I was just kind of skimming through, you know, some of the information that they were talking about. I didn't see anything that was like, oh my gosh, that's going to be amazing. I guess the whole um, Apple intelligence thing. We'll just have to see how that kind of plays out um i don't know i it's it, they they have um <laughs> okay. big shoes to fill so to speak i think they have you know they're gonna have to yeah hopefully, I, I, hopefully they've taken their time of silence to perfect their product <laughs> so when it comes out it's actually going to be um as good as chat gpt jim and i has actually made some big improvements here recently so yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, geez, I wanted to show you this. Uh, okay, wow. This is Canadian oh, so there's the screen sizes. Yeah, six point nine and six point three. Yeah, are see. are you seeing the 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 cost yeah. in America and it's starting yeah, so, Canadian dollars? They're, just to put this into perspective, that's starting from the iPhone 16 Pro Max starts at 256 gigabytes. The Pixel, uh, I can't even think straight uh pixel 9 pro xl in canada the 256 gigabyte if i'm not mistaken is i think 13 or 14.99 we're talking three or four hundred dollars less than this and people are still saying that that the pixel is too expensive well it is too expensive but this is way more too expensive like that's ridiculous i'm sorry uh, and as you mentioned, the Apple intelligence, I mean, don't get me wrong. It'll come up later. So I don't want to rag on him too much about that one, but yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they're still even making a 256 gigabit phone, whether it be Apple, Google, no, Samsung, two, no, I don't care. 256 is fine, but that's what the base model should be. And it should be inexpensive as all hell. Yeah. Uh, basically when you right now want to bump up to the next one from, for a lot of devices, you're bumping up to the 256 and paying an extra 75 to a hundred bucks. Uh, yeah, and that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. if the base one is 256, then people say, oh, well, they didn't have the other one. So I settled or I couldn't afford it. So I'll settle for this one. Um, just to put it into perspective, most major uh, uh, providers, cellular providers, are now offering ridiculously large data packages. And, uh, well, yeah, but they're charging more money. But dollar for dollar per gigabyte, you are paying way the hell less than when you paid half the money. I have almost 400 gigabytes of data for $30 more than I paid five years ago when I only had 30 gigabytes of data. Do mm -hmm. the math. Right. Yeah. So it's that's that's way way more than a dollar a gigabyte in savings. I mean, it's, yeah. Um, so it, phones should be doing the same thing with with uh, storage. It, yeah. It, I mean, I agree. Two fifty six wouldn't be a bad minimum, but I, I really don't think that I don't see why you couldn't do five twelve as a minimum. Look, storage is cheap now. I mean, you can buy is. you can buy storage for a computer for you know a one gigabit excuse me a one terabyte stick of memory for uh, not memory but 
they're sticks yeah. now. They're not hard drives anymore. So <laughs> they're those yeah. M2, you know, chips. Well, they, they, the, the thing is, the not, phones, they're the not phones, expensive. The phones don't use, they use UFS. Well, some of them 3.1, which online, there's a whole debate about whether nine series is still using 3.1. It's not. It's using four. The eight series did. Use, the eight series had four uh, UFS four, I think. No, that three point one. Um, and you could tell the difference in the, in the speed of things actually transferring on the phone, which, when it's a direct transfer, has very little to do with how fast your processor is. It, it only has to basically say, "Oh, you want to process this? Okay, I'll allow it to happen. Here's your energy. That's it." So it doesn't yeah. take a lot. But the transfer speed at that point is relying on two things. What is the medium of which you're transferring from to what? Uh, as in, uh, is this is this transferring uh, over USB-C? Is it transferring over USB-A? Is it 3 or 3.1 or 3.2? You know, and so on and so on, right? Is it Wi-Fi? But, but once it gets it, the bottleneck is usually going to be how fast can the drive write it? And what people have to understand is in order for the drive to write it, the drive has to read it. So when they say yeah. read and write, they think, oh, this one only has to read and this one only has to write. No. The yeah. one sending well, it doesn't have to do shit except read and then send it. So it can be a slow drive, technically speaking. To well, speed aside, though, the, the yeah. size is, uh, you know, again, I bought a one terabyte hard drive for this computer that I'm on right now. Yeah. And it was like, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Well, yeah, so but how, here's, how can you charge a hundred dollars to go from one twenty-eight to two fifty-six? Okay, hang on a second. There, 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 there is another reason for it. And yes, it's still technically cheap, but it's more expensive than what you put in your computer. Well, I get they, that. The stuff they put into the phone uh, is is like I said, it's not M.2 stuff. It's I'm actually sure. not as fast, and it should be because theoretically they could, maybe not right now. But in the next couple of years, they should be able to actually make another version of an M.2 that's small enough to be able to actually put in a phone and not generate too much heat. That's the biggest deal, by the way. That's why they use UFS 4, because of how small they can make it and how, how, how fast it can still read. But it is massively slower than M.2. Even at it, yeah. even at uh, as it's massive. Well, I get that, but a hundred twenty-eight gig phone is ridiculous. I, I know, but but here's hear years. me out now, okay? <laughs> uh, the thing is, is that the UFS four costs way more than double what M.2 costs, and there's a reason for that because the only time you ever buy the UFS four is if it's going in a in a in a, in a portable device like that, right? That that we just don't have access to, technically speaking, unless we have, you know, ways to get into that. Uh, or you own a business or whatever. Whereas you can get M.2 off of Amazon. You can have it delivered later that day or the next day for next to nothing. Yeah. No shipping costs and put it in whatever it will fit in. Right. I right. put, I put a small, I put it, well, I put a full size one. I know, sorry, a small one in the laptop. I put a really big one. It's actually much bigger in, in where am I pointing? PS5 here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are cheap and the price is coming down. And yeah. two, two, sorry, five twelve as a base. I know you're not the first person to say that that should be a base, but good luck with that. Because the reason why that's not going to happen is because if that's a base, that means two terabyte has to suddenly become uh, a, probably a minimum, uh, not a minimum, a media, a, a mid, mid grade, mid range. Now, you know, people are going to be saying, "Well, why can't I get a four terabyte?" Then that's because a four, a four terabyte stick of, of, of uh, storage would still cost well over a thousand dollars by itself yeah well over so <laughs> no uh so the one the, the 128 is a joke but the reason 256 has to be a base for now at least for the foreseeable future next year or two is because 512 as a base would mean that you would absolutely have two gigabytes in the midsection and four terabytes would be insanely overpriced and no one would buy it which made me think of this. So I, I looked this up real quick. So I got an email the other day from PlayStation that said, hey, Western Digital, you know, because Western Digital makes specific PS5, yeah, you know, certified M2 chips. And their one terabyte is $119. It's pretty cheap. They have an eight terabyte stick now. 
Guess yeah. how much it is. Just guess how much it is. Eleven thousand five hundred. <laughs> no, it could be re- be realistic. Come on, how much? Do you okay, think uh, thirty-five hundred Canadian, six dollars American. <laughs> okay, you're not being serious, but one thousand U.S. dollars. I, well, I was right. Thousands of dollars in Canada. <laughs> What's well, it called? Crazy. What's it called? It's the Western Digital Black SN850P NVME. Wow, you said that so fast. There's no way I'm going to remember it. Western Digital Black. Uh, uh, I well, wasn't finished. Well, yeah, what here. the hell? You pull it up then instead. <laughs> you already know what you're looking for. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. That's I don't remember what did I get uh for the PS5. Um it wasn't Western Digital. Uh although I would buy a Western Digital because that is a very well respected Oh yeah. Oh. They make good stuff, but eight terabytes. Oh my god, I tried to I tried I just tried to click on this with my mouse. What an idiot. <laughs> oh I can't, it's not working. <laughs> Uh wow. Eight ironically terabyte. that's you know what? I'm sorry, that's a good price. See in Canada that 349 one, that'll be at least 450, close to 500. And okay, that but, sounds about right for for right now. But here's the funny thing is you can go to four terabytes half, and even if it wasn't so not on sale, it's 390. That's less than half of eight terabytes. You're telling me it costs more than double to go twice as big? Yes. I don't know. It doesn't, but know. that's just what they're doing because they it's memory's always been like that. You know that. Yeah, you but see, one terabyte to two terabytes, that's good. I mean, you know, you went from one yeah, that's easy. to both, both, of, both I mean, of those have dropped down ridiculous. Two terabytes is going to be a base number pretty soon for yeah. that type of memory. And honestly, the PlayStation is one of the reasons why it will. More people bought those that type of drive for PS5s than they did for PCs in the in the last three years oh, during so. during COVID when when everybody started finally getting their P, their PS fives the, yeah. the sale of those things when once they did the update allowed you to do it through the roof yeah like, well what? I I can see why you would need a lot of storage though because as you and I both experienced when they pushed that update for the Black Ops six yeah it was like ninety gigs yeah. um and it ended up uninstalling some other stuff because neither one of us had enough room because of other games we had yeah and we both have two terabytes of space between the two SSDs so I mean I get yeah. it but that's just, that's and just I and just to be clear, I put all my I put all of my PS5 games as opposed to older PS4 games that are even if they're upscaled for PS5, if they're not re- registered in the system as PS5, they go directly on the PS4 or PS5 storage. On the PS5 storage, they go on the M.2 uh, if they're a PS5 game, and there is a reason for that. It is actually considerably and noticeably faster than the internal storage that comes with the ps5 mine is and the, if you bought that one for instance it would be exactly the same thing it's much faster yeah. like if you look at the specs on that i guarantee you that one's got you up in the six to seven megabit megabyte per second uh read and write area oh i'm sure yeah yeah, yeah because sure. if it's not don't do it it has to be at least 5500 well, yeah. or you don't or you won't put it in there PS5 won't even take it if it's not 5500. They basically yeah. put in a, a hard stop that it has to be actually better than the drive that they put in it. Yeah, which and is which crazy. is probably why <laughs> Western Digital says it's certified PS5 because yeah. they're basically telling Sony, we guarantee you we're making this to be better than oh, and, and it's, not it's, ever below than. Yeah, so, it, I mean, no, I get it, but no, no, I when, just thought that was kind yeah, of Yeah, no, it goes beyond that. Sony actually did make a, a, a registered program. Uh, very much the same as how Google has uh, certified Pixel cards, right? Yeah. Uh, for for things that go with Pixel, like uh, um, when you buy a case uh, for your, for your new phone, uh, you go with one that Google has registered as certified uh, yeah. with them. So D brand with their skins, they're actually registered, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. But all obviously, your what's your favorite case maker for phones? Um, well, I mean, I, I like the same one you do, the Spigen. Um, but here lately I've been using, um, I have one that's from Mouse. 
Okay, both of them are registered with Google. Perfect. <laughs> and and also and both of them are registered with Samsung as well. My wife so has Peak Design. Peak. I like the Peak Design. The only thing I don't like about the Peak Design is the button is really hard to push. Uh, okay. The buttons. Peak These design. buttons are easier to push, but yeah. the Peak Design has a really great magnetic hold system that works yes, I've heard. amazing. But I don't like the button feel. Well, That's Peak, the only reason why I Peak, don't use it. Peak Design got their certification from Google. I believe it was just last year. Oh. Um, and they're 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 a good bet. Uh, it's they don't have what I want in that area. Although when it comes to holding your camera around your neck on your belt or whatever, Peak Design. Uh, I'm talking yeah. about like expensive, you know, mirrorless yeah, yeah, camera yeah, type yeah. stuff. Peak Design is my absolute favorite. When I had to sell all my gear, the the Peak Design strap doesn't go with it. I've had the same Peak Design strap for four cameras. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, they that's where they got their start, as you know, and they yeah. moved into mobile stuff. So uh, but they have a whole line of, you know, magnetic yeah. wireless charging devices, desktop stands. They even have one that you can like literally stick it to the wall. It's not charging, but it. You know, you can like stick your phone to the wall. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, pretty cool. I like their stuff. I just don't like the button feel. It's too hard. It, it's really hard to push it. Well, I, you know what? I'll probably never get the chance to see it because I've never seen anybody with one in real life, and they're not exactly in abundance everywhere right now. They probably will be much more popular in the future, but I doubt that they'll catch up with with Mouse, who is extremely popular because of a massive social media campaign to get them out there the last couple of years. Yeah. It's worked yeah. very well. They're very popular. Uh, people love them, and they do make really nice looking stuff. Um, yeah, I like I like my Spigen not because, or as you like to call it, Spigen. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's like niche, niche, Nietzsche. I mean, <laughs> Nietzsche, Nietzsche. <laughs> whatever you call, it, whatever you want. The I I I like I like it because um, first of all, it's proven itself to me. After yeah, they're great two, cases. Yeah, 100%. after breaking two consecutive phones uh, uh, that weren't Pixels, by the way, this was before the Pixel era. Um, I, I just like you know what I can't do this anymore. I'm going to have to grab a case. And then I broke a couple of you know I was I did both of them on the face of it, right? So I I discovered um, the Liquid Air from Spigen, and I won't get another one because the the one that they call some thin thing is really not actually thinner. But it's a little, it's not quite as soft and, you know, like this. Yeah. And it's it's pretty much the same money. And I don't know if I'd like it. So I just, why not go with the one I know I like? And every year, they always have it available. And it always becomes available about three days before the phone is released. Yeah, And it's more than enough time because it's always available on Amazon. And I get it immediately. So I've used right. the same one. But they have a lot of other things. If you like different designs. There's a lot of other makers uh, for all the phones. It doesn't matter what you get, by the way. All these manufacturers make uh, cases for iPhones, for Samsung, for Google. Uh, Bellroy is uh, a little bit, well, they're not new to it technically, but they're one of the newer ones in the big market. Yeah. Uh, they make like real leather, not faux leather that they call real leather, actual leather that they put on the cases. So, <laughs> yeah. Bellroy. Yeah. Anywho. Well, <laughs> Uh, there was something I needed to bring. I was going to bring up, and I, 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 we got sidetracked a little bit there, and I think I forgot what it was. Yeah, we got, went uh, from uh, iPhone to storage to PlayStation MBs, and <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. So I got it. Yep, here we go. Okay, the um, uh, Pixel Nine Pro Fold. God, that's a mouthful. <laughs> that Pixel Nine Pro Fold. Uh, is in and you can find them uh, in stores. So I went to to go check it out. Um, my first impression is, oh my god, this is really cool. I like it. Like honestly, if it had a better camera, I'd probably go. But then I found a second problem. And uh, in my opinion, it's a software issue they could fix easily, like that, no problem. Um, but it took a while. I had to get the salespeople in there to allow me to piss her up with the phone for a while. And, and and then I explained to them what I was doing and then explained to them the only way you could get around it. So I found out, here's what it was. With the Fold, you've got your regular, it's the same size as the 9, not the XL, or 9 Pro, not the XL, well, same size right. anyways. Mm -hmm. 
basically the screen's the same as the 9 Pro. When you open it up, it's absolutely gorgeous. I promise you. Yes, you can feel the crease. You don't see it so much when there's anything on the screen. And if you open it up, it's likely going to be something on the screen. So it's really nice. It opens completely flat, which is fantastic. Extremely responsive screen. Everything looks fantastic about it. The size is great. But then I, I had it open, and I did the the um, circle to search thing, right? And just let me see if I can search something. You know, circle to search. And it worked perfectly fine. So I opened it and thought, well, this would be really cool to use. When you've got this opening, you're doing all this room, you circle to search, and you can see all your results right away. And there was no way to, to turn it on. It did not work. So I kept <laughs> playing with it and playing with it. So I went over to the Samsung. And the Samsung worked, but of course the Samsung is default on three button menu. Ding, 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 light bulb. I go back to the pixel. I turn on the three button navigation, open it up, boom, there's circle to search. Does not work. So I go back to the Samsung. I said to the sales guy, I'll bet you a thousand dollars right now that I can take the Samsung and put it on gesture instead of three button, and it'll still do circle to search in the open screen in the middle. He says, "Well, I'm not going to take the bet, but I, 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 it's probably the same. It's probably, it's probably an Android problem, not, 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 not Pixel." I said, "You want to make a bet?" And I opened it up. I changed the setting, and I, and, and I, and there, there was a little line at the bottom. That, uh, let me see if I can open this up. At the bottom of the phone, that little line down there that you have to put your hand on, right? Yeah, it was there on both phones. But I put my hand on that, held it for half a second, and guess what? The, uh, uh, the uh, whatever you call it, Z Fold Six did. Circle search. Exactly. Perfectly. Without fail. So I went back to the pixel, turned it back to the three button menu, double checked that it worked, went back to the gesture, nothing. Google, you dropped the ball huge on this one. That's a big problem. People say, oh, well, you could just close it and work you the circle of search. You're on the same page. It doesn't change the page. But but you now you have to start looking for what you want to search. The whole point of circle to search is to circle right then and there. So you should be able to do it with the damn thing open. If Samsung can do it, why can't you? So there's my, and I'm a fanboy. I'm a pixel fanboy, but if I see a problem with it, you I'm going to call known. you out on it. I'm going to call you out on it. It's true. So yeah, that, it's I, I, you know, there's a lot of things like that though that are like, why, yeah. why, why would you not think about that? I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and, and again, I, I'm sure I, you know, by I watched the whole Google thing. The phone does look fantastic. Obviously, I, yeah. I haven't seen one in person, and the screen looks beautiful. I love the size of it. I would love to have a big screen like that, but I, it's and it's not so much whether I can even see or feel the crease. That's not the issue to me. It's just the reliability yeah. of the screen that I'm still in question. So. I understand that, and you have your reasons behind it, but given that there's been zero issues with screen reliability on the Pixel Fold, and it was a first-generation garbage compared to the second one, uh, by, and that's by that's what, that's what uh, uh, reviewers are saying that have had the first one and now they're on the second one and they're saying there's the worlds apart. Some of them say they loved the design of the passport style first one, but they're way more in love with the second one. In all honesty, I never thought I would like it that much. If it had, and this is the biggest caveat for me, if it had the proper pro camera system in it, yeah. Then why I doesn't it? I don't under, I don't even understand why it doesn't. I, it doesn't even. Oh, I can tell anymore. you why. You see how thick this or thick, how thin this phone is, right? It's actually well, each side of it, each side is thinner than this by a good margin. That's why this doesn't work very well. So they have to go with last year's at best phone. This one's deeper. Pop people say, oh, they got the same camera in it. No, they don't. They put different lenses in it. So they, it, there's actually a different focal uh, uh, length in it. Uh, you might think it's the same, but there's a difference between the focal length between where it focuses and where it has to go to there. So that might be the same, but you might have a different distance between the lens and the sensor. Last year's was yeah, like so this. I, I this was under the impression like more depth of field. 
Yeah, I was under the impression the thickness of each side when it was laid open was the same as the thickness of a regular phone. So what you're no. saying is when it's, it's much thinner. When it's closed, it is almost exactly the same as this. Uh, okay, that almost makes sense. Then. Exactly the same. It's so unbelievably thin. It's like basically putting your hands on the thinnest OLED TV you've ever seen in your life uh, at the top edge. Not the bottom where all the speakers are and stuff. So I'm curious, what is that fold in Canadian dollars? How much is it? Oh, God. You're hurting me even asking me to look. I'm scared. <laughs> let well, me, let I'm just... I, I'm, no, no, I'm no, no I know, I know. I can't get my mouse to work. It's, otherwise, I'd, I'd go look. Um, let me go check it out here. All right, let's see. I wonder if I can get this to do this. Uh... What do you call it? Uh, Google Store. Oh, it did work. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, browsing some phones. Yeah, let's browse the phones. All right, let me go back here and share the screen while I'm already almost there. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Got to get this ready to actually hit the share button. <laughs> screen. Yeah, I'm starting to figure out how to do this now after 17,000 years. So when I hit share, it doesn't mean you can see it. <laughs> uh, show on stream. Uh, yeah, there we go, the Google one. All right, let me get to it. Got to go back to this window. Where's the fold? Oh, there it is. Fold. Did I click it? I thought I clicked it. Did anything happen? I don't think anything happened, dude. Oh, wait a minute. All right, this, something's wrong here. It's it's refreshing now, it looks like. Yeah, but it, that should have just been instantaneous. Okay, so twenty three ninety nine. So it's from twenty three ninety nine. So I was curious though to compare it to the iPhone price, which was seventeen. Oh, that that fifty nine. Yeah, no, that's not a good comparison. They don't have a foldable. That's not fair. I know. No, that's my point. Right. That's exactly my point, though. Is I wanted to compare what their regular was to the foldable, and oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you're you're paying six hundred dollars more to have a foldable in the Pixel versus a regular phone in the iPhone. Now, just, granted, obviously, there's some of the hardware that's a lot different. But I was just curious to compare, you know, what their normal phone was to the fold. So that, yeah, right now, I just question. like to know why their why their site is going so slow. I think it's because the fold is actually ridiculously popular right now. As expensive as it is, it's selling like hotcakes for something as expensive as it is. Everybody's dog seems to want one. I thought I look at that. I, Jesus, I, I it wouldn't go back to the page I wanted, so it jumped. Um, all right, let's go in here, man. I might be better off just going to one of the uh, one of the well, no, you answered my question. You don't, I mean, no, yeah, but I didn't answer my question. I want to, I, I want to see because I know what I'm paying at Rogers, which is an inflated price. I want to know what, what they're charging here. What does it say? No, that's so nine. The fold in US, skip it. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, hey, stop. Oh, no, I still fold. It, it jumped back up again. Stop jumping. Okay, Pixel 9 Pro. That's 9 Pro. Where's the XL? Uh, Click it up top. No, that, that says 9 Pro and Pro XL, but then it only shows you the one. So I actually have to click on buy in order to see it. Okay, oh, from $14.99. So $300 difference. However, that said... This, of course, starts at 128, not 256. So if I were to click on this one and then switch, oh God, it's not even letting me. Did they sell out or is it just not loaded yet? <laughs> what the hell's going in? Going on, I mean. Okay, let's, okay, oh, I didn't pick one. That's why I'm an idiot. Uh, okay, 256, 1629. So it's $170 less. Um yeah. before tax. That's still a significant price difference. I up to maybe a hundred dollars I could see a difference, but I think they've over premium premiumized 
I know that's not really a word. I think they've over premiumized their device at Apple uh, to make it. Uh, Google, I can almost understand doing this because they're trying to make themselves look like a direct competitor to Apple. Remember what I said before? I've been saying this since we started the podcast, by the way. Uh, Google is not trying to compare them, or sorry, not competing with Samsung. They have zero desire to compete with Samsung. They are in competition specifically with Apple. And there is the proof in the pudding. Uh, and the pricing is trying to get there, but they're still undercutting. Well, not really, because hey, Apple just priced theirs just now. <laughs> um, but they're also uh, not trying to get, you know, step on the toes of Samsung. Uh, so a, a 16 Pro Max in the U.S. starts at 11.99. Pixel 9 Pro XL, XL 256 starts at 11.99. The 128 is 10.99, and the Fold is 17.39. Wow! So wait, what did you say? Why am I jerky? Okay, I'm fine now. Uh, what did you say the uh, 9 Pro XL was? Um, or, sorry, 11, the, 11.99. Sorry, I meant the iPhone, the iPhone 16 Pro Max, I meant. Oh, um, 11.99. So they're actually the same price in the U.S. Yeah. The fuck? Oh. Google, <laughs> what the shit are you doing? <laughs> or more importantly, Apple, what the shit are you doing? Why would you charge an extra eight hundred or seven hundred dollars in Canada? It, what the fuck? They're basically saying it costs six hundred percent, or no more than that, nine hundred percent more. Well, what's the well? No, I mean what? I don't know. My math is bad. What, what do you remember? Yeah. The price was there. It was like yeah, seventeen ninety nine, whereas the Pixel was was one hundred and seventy dollars less. So yeah, but uh, the, it just sounds the, like these are U.S. dollars, not Canadian. I, mean, I know the, the that's what I'm rate. saying. If you forget, even if you take into account the exchange rate, why is the exchange rate higher for iPhone than it is for for Pixel? You understand what I'm saying, right? Pixel's exchange rate is pretty close to smack on for the difference in the dollar value, plus the extra amount it would cost for shipping, which is a fact because you have to factor in the shipping, not just the exchange rate. There's gas that they have to pay for in both U.S. and Canadian dollars when they ship it. Fuel, right? Um, Apple seems to have overinflated on the Canadian end for the exact same thing. Saying. They should be the same damn difference in price. They are really seriously ripping off. Canadians, I don't usually say this, but why the hell would you buy an iPhone at that price? That, what are you, crazy? Do you hear oh, what I you see what you're saying? You're so you so our seventeen ninety nine fold is your twenty three hundred dollar fold versus our eleven ninety nine Pro Max is your twenty three hundred Pro Max. So I see what you're saying. No, no, seven seven seventeen ninety nine Pro Max is eighteen hundred dollars. Oh, eight, say, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so it's yeah, yeah, but yeah. but but yet the Pixel. Uh, is is seven one hundred and seventy dollars less than than yeah. than that? But in the U.S., the iPhone Pro Max and the Pixel Nine Pro XL two fifty six gig are the exact same price. Yeah. So there's zero reason why there should be a difference like that in Canada. They should be the same price. Now Pixel is not undercutting themselves in Canada for that phone. So Apple is way overcharging Canadians for the phone. Interesting. Way overcharging Canadians for the phone. <laughs> Apple. Yeah, interesting. Why is, hang on one second. I can't believe I'm taking a phone call while I'm... No, I'll call him back. <laughs> oh, it's my watch <laughs> calling, though, eh? <clears throat> That's funny. Anyways, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah enough about that. But... Yeah. um well, we are almost out of time, but I do want to bring up one other thing on the AI side of things. And we talked about it was the Gemini stuff. Um, so, you know, they're making a lot of advancements. And of course, because I have that two terabyte plan, of course, you have it too with uh, your phone, the Gemini Advanced. But they have these things now called gems. Um, yes, gems. 
And it's basically a, like, so, like, in chat GPT, you have these chat bots, these GPTs, they call them, that can be customized for specific routines or, like, specific functions. Well, the gym is basically the same thing. So it's basically Gemini's GPT where it can be very specific to like a, like, for example, if I want to write a blog, it would be like a gym specific that's designed to do blog posts, right? And that's what it's like whole function is. That's what it's geared towards and, and optimized for. So I think it's pretty cool. There's something I'm testing for Google right now in a beta. I can't really talk about it yet, but it actually works really, really well. Uh, it's got some weird quirks, which I'll put in my little feedback stuff, but um, it actually works really, really well. But they do have some you know, basic ones that are available. I think you said you had some when you looked at it, right? Uh, well, I, I looked, I've, I've looked at it. I don't understand it. I don't know what to do with it. So you're the guy in that direction to talk about that. I'd actually like to know exactly what, uh, see, like for you... example, here's ones that are basically the like part of it. So for example, um, they have a gym called career guide, unlock you're, you're, your career. You're pointing, potential. you're pointing at it, but you're not showing it to us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't because it's got some of the stuff in there that, that I'm beta testing. So oh, okay, it. okay, all right. All right. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Sorry, yeah. Look, <coughs> sorry, but no. So, like, writing editor, right? So, writing Embargo. coach. Okay. <laughs> they have things that are <laughs> that are like optimized and specifically written to do a specific kind of task. So, um, right. I think it's pretty cool. It's it's again, it's just like a GPT in Chat GPT where. You can go uh, search for a GPT to like write a blog post, and it's geared specifically for writing blog posts or whatever the case may be. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's I, pretty cool. I personally wouldn't know what to do with any of it because, again, it's, that's that's kind of beyond my scope of how to how to do things. But um, I'm I'm glad others know. <laughs> Uh, in all honesty, when it comes to Jim and I, I just like to see thrice the amount of voices available and way more diversity because even the ones with accents sound very, very, very Midwest America. Not that there's <laughs> anything wrong with Midwest America, but if you're not from there, you're probably wondering, why do I not? You know what I want to know? Why doesn't any of these do a nice Southern accent? People make fun of Southern accents, but there's millions of people with Southern accents because that's just how their accents ended up being. It's no different than an English accent or a New York accent. So why can't I get... Uh, I, I haven't even looked to see what, yeah. what kind of accents. I, I assume my voices here in the U.S. side would be the same as yours, I'd imagine. They're, they're exactly the same voices. Yeah. There's no difference. I don't have any French-Canadian voices, which would also be kind of neat. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd love to say, hey, how's the weather? The weather is going to be good today. Uh -huh. yeah, the Creton. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but but anyways, mean, that's what those gyms are. And I think I think they're on the right track, though. I think they're, they're again, they're trying to compete with the chat GPTs that are available that you can have do specific, you know, functions and tests. Like I, I mean, I had some in mind when I used Chat GPT before I moved over to Gemini, so they're just like, you know, code snippets that are geared and optimized for a specific, you know, type function is all it is. <laughs> so, uh... anyways, I think that's uh, all I wanted to talk about, and I guess we're Chat. right at our our normal hour. Oh wow! Has it been? It has been an hour already. Yeah, yeah. That's we've been uh, we've been rambling about all kinds of crazy stuff. We have uh, not really rambling. We've been talking yeah. about it. It's, it's what we do. That's what we do here. It's what we do. United we stand. Divided we podcast. It's what we do. And, we what um, we do. and by Jordan. the way, if anybody's still wondering, I don't know how many of you may or may not be. Yes, by Pixel Nine Pro XL. I still love it. It's still the best phone I've ever had. Not just the best Pixel, the best phone I've ever had. 
it's phenomenal. Battery life is fantastic. So there you have it. Yeah, I don't have it a lot. It has its own I'm pillow. A reviewer in that respect. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I still haven't got a lot of stuff going on. And I still have an, another video I have to do about the edits for the last video I put on my channel. Um, but again, yeah. I will say before we leave, both of us have other channels. Links in description. But this one, don't forget to like. Where, where, are the, where are the buttons down here somewhere? It'd be this way. Like <laughs> and subscribe. No, I mean, hit the bell icon and all that stuff. Or maybe you can pop something up right here. Nah, that's too much work. <laughs> but you can check out one of these videos. Oh, wait. I'm not in the middle of the screen. You have to put your hand up on the other side. One of these videos. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put your hand up. One of these. No, the other hand. Yeah, because remember, there's both, both of us. So it's one of these videos. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, I have it centered, so it'd be like this. Like, oh, really? Okay, no, yeah, but you're you're centered. You're talking about there, but there's two of us on the screen. So I guess we should uh, maybe move. Oh, whoops, sorry, I moved the wrong way. Move over and go like this. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, okay, so in 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 in. Uh, I was going to say conclusion, but uh, that's not it. Uh, what is it when you say something in post? Uh, at the end uh, basically the last thing just to, to recap that's it pixels excellent pixel fold fantastic but google you made a mistake you left something out uh, you can't really go wrong with any flagship phone but beware you're not going to get your apple intelligence out of the box if you buy it on day one and canadians if you buy an iphone you're getting ripped off exactly <laughs> uh obviously it's been 23 years but there's still people that hurt our hearts go out to all of you survivors and, and yes. people lots of loved ones uh be safe out there everybody and you have a wonderful week and we'll see you again soon i'm lionel from toronto and i'm robert from nashville see you next week ciao